Lithium is a chemical element with the symbol Li and atomic number 3. It is an element of many uses. It is used in production of airplanes, as well as some batteries. It is also used as treatment option in mental health, which is where our focus is in this video. In mental health, we better know lithium as a mood stabilizer. It's important that you know the normal therapeutic level for your exam, and the normal therapeutic level for lithium is 0.6 to 1.2 milliequivalent per liter. As you can see, it does have a narrow therapeutic window, and the lithium toxicity can occur when this level reaches 1.5 or higher. Lithium is known as the gold standard for treating manic episodes, and there's evidence showing that some effectiveness on depressive symptoms as well as manic symptoms. It does have evidence of anti-suicidal effects. What that means is that if a patient is manic and also has suicidal thoughts, lithium will be a great option for this patient. Another important part is that lithium is not metabolized and it's excreted unchanged from the body. So it's excreted unchanged in the urine. And lithium is also neuroprotective, meaning it has ability to prevent neuronal cell damage. It is a neuroprotective treatment choice for patients with bipolar. Before starting a patient on lithium, it is important that you have some baseline labs in place to make sure the drug is safe and effective. The labs that you want to order are CBC, you want electrolytes, you want to pay special attention to sodium level, and that's because hypernatremia lo uh, lowers lithium concentrations, and hyponatremia can lead to potentially toxic concentrations of lithium. And normal sodium level is 135 to 145. You also want a thyroid function test. You want to know the patient's TSH level. That's because lithium is known to increase the risk for uh, thyroid abnormalities, and it has a high risk of hypothyroidism. And that's why you want to know the TSH level, and the normal TSH level is 0.5 to 5.0. You also make sure you do a pregnancy test, so an HCG level. And you want an EKG on all patients that are age 50 and above. And that's because lithium has some cardiac side effects. And lastly, you want to know the serum creatinine level and BUN. It is important that you understand that kidney disease and drugs that reduce renal clearance, such as NSAIDs, thiazides, and ACE inhibitors, can significantly impact the serum concentration of the drugs that are primarily excreted by the kidneys. Understanding these interactions is crucial for healthcare professionals to ensure optimal drug therapy and minimize the risk for adverse effects. So as a provider, if you prescribe lithium, which is a drug that's excreted by the kidneys, it is important that you find out if the patient has any history of kidney disease or if they're taking any NSAIDs, such as ibuprofen or naproxen, thiazides, such as hydrochlorothiazides, or ACE inhibitors, which are your blood pressure medications that end with prills, for example, lisinopril or benazepril. All right, next we're going to look at the warnings and precautions. So you want to monitor the patient for dehydration. So if the patient is vomiting or has diarrhea, there are a higher chance for dehydration, which also puts them at higher risk for toxicity. So on your exam, if you have a patient that's presenting with vomiting or diarrhea, do not give him lithium because there are high risk for severe dehydration, which results in higher chance of toxicity. We also do not want to use lithium if the patient has severe cardiovascular disease. Lithium infrequently reveals Brigada syndrome, which is an inherited life-threatening heart condition that some people have without knowing it. It can cause severe ab abnormal heartbeats and other symptoms such as severe dizziness, fainting, shortness of breath, and it needs medical attention right away. Before starting a lithium treatment, you should ask if there's any known heart conditions, unexplained fainting, and any family history of heart problems or sudden unexplained death before the age of 45. And remember, you always want to get an EKG before you start patient on lithium because it can cause benign reversible T-wave changes, which will impair the SA node function and then could cause a heart block. And lastly, you want to make sure you do not give a patient lithium that has sodium depletion. So to remember which patients that should not take lithium, we're going to use the acronym DCL which is gonna be discontinued lithium. 
D is for dehydration. So if the patient is dehydrated, we do not give him lithium. C is for cardiovascular disease. And the L is for low sodium. So if you have any of these patients, you discontinue lithium. And as mentioned earlier, lithium has a narrow therapeutic window, so chances of side effects are common. More than 80% of patients taking lithium experience side effects. So some of the side effects to watch for are hypothyroidism, which as mentioned earlier, lithium is known to increase the risk of thyroid abnormalities. You want to watch for fine hand tremors, maculopapular rash, and upset GI. So nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, cramps, anorexia, and then polyuria, which is excessive urination, and polydipsia, which is excessive thirst. Diabetes insipidus, T-wave inversions, and leukocytosis. You also want to monitor for any signs of toxicity. So those symptoms are severe nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, confusion, coarse hand tremor. So for side effects, you saw fine hand tremor. And as lithium levels increase, you reach toxicity level, the tremors become coarse. So a coarse tremor has a significant displacement where fine tremors is barely noticeable. You also want to watch for uh, drowsiness, muscle weakness, heart palpitations, and ataxia. So monitor the patient for unsteadiness while standing or walking. Patient education is an important part in reducing the incidence and severity of side effects. So patient taking lithium should be advised that changes in body's water and salt content can affect the amount of lithium excreted, resulting in either increases or decreases in lithium concentrations. As mentioned earlier, excessive sodium intake lowers lithium concentrations, and too little sodium can lead to toxic concentration of lithium. It is important to stay hydrated and have good fluid intake. Decrease in fluid intake can lead to dehydration, and lithium toxicity.